Recipes for technical trading success in Cook's Kitchen. Why are software stocks so darn expensive and just getting chased higher here, leading the market? Today, we're going to explore why based on a metric called the rule of 40. First, take a look at my screen. We're going to uh, look at some of these valuations. Um, I put together a portfolio I've been tracking of 30 software stocks in the Zacks portfolio tracker here. Just, I mean, there's obviously 100 to choose from. I picked 30 that I've had my eye on. Here they are alphabetically uh, from Akamai and Apian to all the way down to uh, Zen, Zendesk and Zscaler and Workday and Viva. Uh, but let's rank them according to growth. So go over here, click on growth. And I want to see price to sales because that's really the way we need to talk about software stocks. So, um, uh, I'm sorry, I need to I need to click on value, to because if I'm looking at valuations, I'm so used to clicking on growth. Anyway, so here we go. We've got price to sales, PS ratio. Uh, let's sort it. Whoa, some are really cheap, some are super expensive. Look at this, uh, Zscaler at 39 times. Okta at 35 times sales. Coupa Software, 30 times sales. Uh, Smart Systems and Viva near 27, 28. All right, so caveat here is that uh, the price to sales ratios I just showed you are trailing 12 months. And if we're truly growth investors, we're not looking at trailing, we're looking at forward. And so the price to sales ratios are considerably lower. Uh, maybe a Zscaler is uh, under 30 times. Uh, Viva is 20, 21, 22 times, uh, but still expensive. If you're, when you look at the valuations in software, the stocks that are running to new highs here are trading 15, 20, in some cases 25 times forward sales. So, um, you know, this is how expensive the softosphere is, as I call it. The softosphere is in the stratosphere. Now, why is that? comes back to the rule of 40. Let's take a look at a commentary I wrote for my Taser subscribers uh, on June 21st. The rule of 40 equals software valuations that make some sense. Um, and I pivoted off of, I, I, I had done a, a lot of work in software in Q2. Um, a couple of different uh, Zach's Confidential pieces. Uh, here was one in April, the tech super cycle continues. Um, where I just looked at some of the drivers. Uh, you know, here's the, here's the software equal weight ETF, XSW. Um, we'll take a look at that in a moment where it's trading now, but, uh, you know, off to new highs. Um, included NVIDIA in the discussion of software because look at this stack. NVIDIA, Jensen Wong, he knows what he's doing. He just doesn't create... The, the parallel architecture for artificial intelligence, he creates an entire stack of systems, algorithms, and applications. So it's a unified architecture, uh, including software, obviously. And then um, I showed this graphic of you know, the smart city, where money is going to make cities smarter. Well, that's all software-based, right? Uh, and my four recommendations back in April were Smartsheet, Viva Systems, Proofpoint, and Pega. Uh, all went on to make new highs. Then in June, took another dive into software because you, know, you just can't, you can't study this area enough. It is the future. Software continues to eat the world, as I say, because, or as Mark Andreessen originally said, but, but I keep reiterating it, because uh, software doesn't consume time and space and it actually creates more of them. There's, there's infinite variations of programs that suit a particular business's needs. So in June, I did something called Big Data Gold Rush, Harness Chaos or Be Disrupted. And I took a closer look at some of the companies that were doing data mining. Um, here's an incredible uh, chart from Statista on the expected growth of big data and analytics to a $274 billion market by 2022. All right, so that might explain what's driving the gold rush. And my four stocks recommended in June were Alteryx, uh, Domo, Splunk, and Microsoft. Because you, Microsoft, you know, 
they're, they're going to be a player. In fact, I think they might buy a data mining company like a Splunk or an Alteryx if they're not already building their own data mining and modeling engine. Okay, so back to my recent report on the rule of 40. Uh, again, here's another snapshot of the growth. This is incredible. From a, this is from a, an iBank research team where we just crossed 100 billion um, in sales in the SaaS industry in 2018. And the next 100, and that took, that took over 10 years. The next 100 billion is gonna come in like three years. And then they're projecting a $400 billion market by 2023. All right, so let's get down to the rule of 40. This comes from Brad Feld. Brad Feld is a famous uh, Silicon Valley VC. And his rule of 40, he wrote about it in 2015. It's just really simple. It's he wants to, he wants to own software companies if they have at least a combination, at least 40%, a combination of sales growth and some metric of profit growth. So, you know, you, they could have uh, no profit margin at all and be growing sales at 40%, and he would consider that um, a software company to own. So uh, I'll, I'll read directly here from, uh, from Felt. The 40% rule is that your growth rate plus your profit should add up to 40%. So if you are growing at 20%, you should be generating a profit of 20%. If you are growing at 40%, you should or could be generating zero profit. If you are growing at 50%, you can lose 10%. Um, so obviously anything better than 40% was great for him. But here's the question, what metric of profit is he talking about? And this is again from his 2015 blog on the rule of 40. Are we talking about EBITDA, operating income, net income, free cash flow, cash flow, or something else? He says he prefers EBITDA uh, as a baseline, and then he back tests with other percentages. Um, for example, he says, hey, if you're running your SaaS on AWS, um, your costs are consistent, and so your EBITDA should be consistent too. Um, all right, now, so that's basically the rule of 40. And that's why these valuations are so high and why investors keep plowing into them. Because, listen, when you think about it, how many software stocks are going to be impacted by the trade war? Some, but very few. They're not shipping, uh, they're not shipping uh, products. They're not shipping the disks of software. It comes from the cloud. And their growth is in uh, cloud infrastructure or cloud um, services that, you know, globally where it, you know, it's just, uh, <laughs> you know, software as a service, send it, send it to them you know, over the internet. Um, and whether that's updates or continual service, uh, a monthly subscription, an annual subscription, you know, it's, it, it, it's a universe of its own. All right, so let's take a look at some companies here that have th you know, this magic growth. Um, and this is from an iBank where they're looking at a couple of tiers here. Who's growing at over 50%? Well, you got companies like Zoom. That's why, that's why the Zoom uh, IPO is so popular because they just came off of growing revenues um, in a quarter at 100%. So that's why um, their 2019 enterprise value over sales is trading over 50 times. And based on 2020 sales, they're only trading at 38 times. But you know, that's why they're so expensive at 50 times because they've got 100% growth. Here's MDB, um, uh, MongoDB, Mongo Database, uh, growing at 85%. Um, you would think that their price to sales would be higher. There's Twilio, 80% growth, um, trading at only 13 times. Uh, Zscaler's in there, Square, Smartsheet, AYX, Shopify, of course. I mean, Shopify, Shopify is a massively interesting story right here because, I mean, it's obviously not just software, it's a platform. And investors have just piled in here lately because they think that this is a credible threat to Amazon. That, you know, they, 
They didn't name the platform Sellify just just for sellers, which is which is the way I've always thought of it. But I was talking to another investor. It's like he did, they didn't name it Sellify. They named it Shopify, which tells you where they're going in terms of creating a shopping platform. They're not just catering to the small business that wants to sell. They are out. They're out after a big retail market. All right. Uh, interestingly, I own uh, Square, Smartsheet, and Alteryx, which are you know in the in the top tier, growing over 50 percent. Then you've got some growing 40 to 50 percent. Okta. Okta is the uh, really fascinating um, security company that focuses on identity. Uh, you know, so instead of managing passwords, I assume that they're using either biometric credentials or something to, to where the security is for the individual to have access. Uh, you've got uh, Coupa software in here, Zen. All right, so over 40% growth commands a distinct increase in valuation. And the average uh, price to sales for 2020 of these companies for next year's sales, the average price to sales ratio is over 17 times. And that's why you have some of these companies like Aviva over 20 times, Zscale are over 25 times. Um, I'm not sure where Shopify is right now. Uh, so this is why people are paying so much for software. Because of the growth and because of this idea, the rule of 40 is a different valuation metric. That it's, you know, that it's okay to pay uh, 20 to 30 times or even 40 times sales for you know, growth of 40 to 50% or 80% or 100%. Look at uh, our latest IPO in the space, um, uh, Slack, uh, symbol work. And they also are teamed up with Atlassian team, so teamwork. But that Slack IPO, again, this thing came out of the gate trading 30 times, and I think it traded as high as 40 times sales projections. And investors were willing to pay that. I mean, large investors, because they're looking at you know, software growing at high double digits, then they'll pay you know, 20 to 30 times for those sales. Interestingly enough, uh, Goldman wants to be short uh, Slack, uh, symbol work. And so does the team at Hedgeye. Um, they just think that, you know, they're not calling a top on the whole software sector, but they're pointing to, you know, some of these new IPOs are ridiculously overvalued, uh, and maybe Zoom's not with the 100% growth. All right, so the rule of 40, very simple. You want to have 20% uh, sales growth and, and some form of 20% uh, profit growth whether that's you know, EBITDA or some other you know, operating margin. And that's where large investors, that's what they're putting in their models and coming up with what they'll pay for some of these stocks. So if you want to uh, look at any of these reports I've written, um, just email ultimate at zax.com and get a trial to Taser or to Zax Confidential. You can see my Zax Confidential reports from April and from June on software. Um, and then a bunch of that stuff ends up in my Taser commentary uh, throughout uh, Q2. Great stuff to go back and read to understand how to pick software stocks. All right, thanks for joining me in the kitchen.